and it can be anything from a yoga video, right, as a family, or um, just sending the kid outside and run around the house five times, right? <laughs> Teach Better team, and I am with the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Michael Jennings. I can't believe we're live together. I can't either, and I don't know how you talked me into this because it is 6 a.m. my time. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I do have to tell you, and I want to make sure our network knows this as they like slowly get into our video feed, which I will, of course, check is also streaming in the right place because we've had so many tech issues this morning, but this <laughs> of a bucket list for me you and I live together so I'm I'm gonna enjoy this a little bit yeah well and I appreciate that and I'm gonna enjoy it too I mean it's just one of those kind of one of the quirks that I have it's almost a, a my cross to bear I suppose I just have this uncanny ability to do anything that you ask me to do you know I don't know that that's true because you don't work with me anymore because you ditched me and I don't talk to you nearly enough. So I don't think that I have the power that you're claiming I have. But I am glad that you decided to come live with us this morning. Yeah, no, this is awesome. Uh, in all seriousness, I'm really pumped. I appreciate you asking. Um, anytime that I get to, one, talk to you and um, specifically about teaching and education, I'm super excited about it. I love talking shop. And two, I love what you and your entire team are doing. So it's it's really an honor and a privilege to, to be here and uh, kind of just be a part of the morning. So I Thank love you. it. So I know we have Jeff Kaplan in here, Dave Schmidt's commenting, Megan, Alex. I love that you're all putting your name at the end of the comments. We know who you are when you're commenting because we do really love to engage with you specifically. Um, Jennings, for people who don't know you, uh, would you kind of tell us what do you do in education? I mean, I have my own introduction that I'll be giving you that may not be so kind, but for the other normal <laughs> people who don't actually know you, what is your role in education? Why are you a good, goofy person to be joining us on our daily morning drop-in this morning? Okay, so um, I was formerly a physical education teacher. Um, as you mentioned, I did teach with you at Evans Junior High School in Bloomington, Illinois. Um, and I am currently out in Boise, Idaho, um, working for um, a company called Athlos, and we are an educational service provider. Um, I and more or less, in a nutshell, trying to be the Ray Hewitt of the PE world. That's that's kind of my goal. Is um, I do content curriculum, professional development, uh, CEU courses for uh, physical educators. So um, as as it's flipped upside down for everybody right now, um, it's quite the interesting um, conundrum we found ourselves in. And so now there's a whole new kind of basket of challenges that we're, that we're dealing with. So um, just trying to support teachers. Um, I, I'm very passionate about physical education, as you, as you know. I'm very passionate about movement and getting kids moving, not even just active, but moving with a purpose, um, offering quality movement experiences for, for everybody, um, all the way from kindergarten up through high school athletes. So that's kind of the, the large swath of individuals that I try to help out. Um, and so any opportunity I get to to help a teacher who then can help a school or help a class, that's that's what I'm all in it for. So I'm super pumped. I love it. I love Dave, Dave Schmidt commented, what a lofty goal. I think that that's because he knows that my goal is actually to be the Michael Jennings of education. And <laughs> you are just being too nice. I, um, I wouldn't have necessarily introduced you that way. I would have described you as the educator that I worked with that I always admired, that I always got new innovation, like innovative ideas from, and then the one that ditched me. And now I'm just, you know, <laughs> at a loss in my own school building because I don't actually know what our school building can be without Jennings. I mean, you are such an amazing educator. And to see the impact that you're making now is amazing. I've, I've truly loved not only following your journey, but you are somebody that I've had in my life for a number of years that consistently challenges me to be better. And I just admire so many things that you're doing. So it's awesome to be live with you. And as I said earlier, for the swarm of people that are now joining us right now, if you didn't hear me, this is a bucket list to be live with you. So I am so stoked. <laughs> for 
Yeah, well, it is. And hopefully, you know, that you you were giving the challenges right back, though, because I remember like being next door to you in the health when I was in the health classroom and, you know, you doing all these things. And I'd kind of like peek my head in and, and what's she doing in there? Like, I got to figure this out because it's, this is not what I'm doing and I want to do what she's doing. And this looks really cool. So um, it, the feeling is definitely mutual. Um, it was it was an absolute pleasure to be able to teach with you for I don't know what, like seven years or something. Like it was a long, kind of a long time. I can't believe you, I can't believe you like just dealt with me for that. To be honest. <laughs> well, you know what? We have a group of people at Evans that miss dealing with you. So it's good to actually see you and talk to you. And uh, I always enjoy, I will tell you for those of you that are, you know, popping in here saying good morning. It's so great to see your comments. It is not a day goes by where you're not walking the halls of Evans Junior High and someone's not FaceTiming with Michael Jennings. <laughs> like it just seems <laughs> to be a natural occurrence. Um, you know, I was really thrilled. You reached out to me earlier this week just to touch base. I don't actually remember. I think we were talking about our daily drop-ins and you had mentioned, um, you know, like kind of being in a struggle with, with the support that your group's trying to provide. And so I was so thrilled that, the, that you had reached out because it allowed us to say, hey, let's come in and talk shop Friday morning. And I know we're going to have a lot of questions um, from our network here because you and having uh, having a focus in physical education, you're actually the teachers I think we should be collaborating with the most right now so that we can make sure that we're not only serving our students with content, depending on where you are in this process, but really getting our students up and moving. So I was thrilled that you planned this. Can you give me some insight? What's going on in your world right now related to um, the pandemic that we're in? Well, um a lot. And like, like you said, it depends on where you are in the process because everybody's different. You know, like I'm, we are fortunate to partner and support schools from New Orleans um, all the way up here to uh, Boise, Idaho and everything in between. And so depending on the state, depending on the district, everybody's asking for something different. Some people are saying nothing at all. Some people are saying um, teachers come into the building and you need to be providing daily lessons somehow to students. Um, so just trying to navigate this entire situation um, as tactfully as possible. Um, I'm approaching it to be 100% transparent and 100% clear, um, regardless of where you are, from my perspective, the role of a physical educator right now should be to kind of to take a less is more approach. Um, you know, I've heard, honestly, a little bit of horror stories about kids spending six and seven hours on their screen right now because that's the only way that teachers can get them material and it's not to anybody any individual's fault you know it's it's not anybody's fault everybody's trying to do what is being asked by the school districts do what they think is is right um but the unfortunate side effect of that is google classroom seven hours a day or a packet six hours a day or you know and all these things and um there are there are bunch of very dedicated physical educators out there that have done some great work in putting together uh, these assignments and these projects and these video links, you know, but then, like I said, less is more. Right now, I think our, our approach should be, let's be a, a positive face to check in with our students. Let's um, try to relieve the stress that is going on in everybody's lives. Um, let's not add any more stress to our own personal lives. I mean, we've got... <laughs> We've got families, we've got dogs, we've got jobs to do. We're all working from home. We don't know what's going on um, any more than the kids do. And so um, what we're, what our kind of approach is at Athlos is we want to kind of provide opportunities and a kind of a plan for how to get kids moving um, throughout the day. We're by no means assessing like or grading anything like we can't nothing's going to be valid or reliable in, in that field anyways. You know, I'm in my living room. Kids are in their living room. They didn't, these four kids didn't sign up for online classes. They wasn't their plan, you know? So um, really just trying to kind of be, ex kind of promote and encourage movement and physical activity in a family sense, not just individually and just getting people kind of to relieve some of the stress that has already mounted. You know, like right now we've got parents that work, that are working from home that are now science teachers, math teachers, history teachers, English teachers, tech coaches, secretaries, art teachers, and we're asking them to be a PE teacher. 
And unfortunately, you know, depending on what your experience was in PE when you were a kid, you might hate PE, you know? So like now we've got to work through that conundrum. And the last thing we want to do is add more to people's plate. So like I said, just being present, giving some options, um, encouraging kind of just this little check-in. We've got some of our staff that we're working with that are doing some really great like movement challenges and encouraging their kids to share them on social media with certain hashtags and stuff. And so I, I, I look forward to what it's going to be. Um, it's, it's definitely, you know, a weird, weird is how I've been describing it lately. It's just a weird time. Um, it's a weird, so it is a weird time. And I do want to make sure that we get back to maybe some of those specifics because you gave so much value in terms of some things that you've seen. And I think our network would really value kind of getting those specifics that they can turn around this morning and say, oh, I'm going to do that same thing with my students. I do want to uh, give a shout out to Alex. Alex is uh, an administrator in Illinois, and he's actually asking you, Jennings, uh, do you work with PE all over or just where you live now? He says he may want to reach out privately. I do want to have you address that question. And then Alex, I can just tell you from my perspective, Jennings is my go-to person for anything physical education. So I would totally encourage you to reach out, but maybe Jennings, would you give a little more detail in what your specific role is? And then kind of the other just avenues that, that you do to support all educators, which I know you do constantly. Absolutely. So my specific job title is I'm, I'm the director of Healthy Body. Um, and the company that I work for is called Athlos. And so we have a multi-pillared approach to education. Um, being one being prepared mind, one being performance character, and the third pillar being um, healthy body. And so I am in charge of the healthy body pillar, which encompasses all things, physical education, strength and conditioning for young and high school athletes, um, coaching practices, and everything in between. So um, we do work across the country. I mean, uh, I have a call later today with a, a small school down in Missouri. Um, we have some, I was on with an athletic director from the Boise school district yesterday. Um, like I said, we've got, um, depending on if you were on the call, when, when I first started talking, we've got schools from new Orleans all the way up to Boise, Idaho and everywhere in between. So, um, I would strongly encourage in this time because I know, um, the, que the question is always like, what do we do? What are we doing with PE? What are we doing with music? You know, what are we doing with band? And so um, I would love to have a conversation outside of this with anybody. Um, maybe I can throw my contact information in the chat box or something. Um, yeah. I don't know how to necessarily do that. I'll have to figure that out, but we'll get that hooked up for you. Yeah. Um, but because I think what needs to happen to ease the, some of the parents minds is a school district or a school and just maybe even an individual school having a unified approach as to what they're sending out or saying to their, to their families. Um, because like I said, there's, there's nobody to blame here. Everybody's trying their best, but because of that, I think some things might be getting lost in translation. Some things might be expected, you know, that, that are maybe a little bit unrealistic. Um, you know, I, I made the kind of the joke yesterday because I saw something go out that was linking an assign a physical education assignment to a state standard and trying to explain it to a parent. And I'm like, I'm sorry, but the moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas don't need to know what, you know, ISBE 19.a.3a needs <laughs> needs. Like that's not important right now. So um but yeah, to answer your question, Alex, um, I, we do work all over the place. I support schools any way that I possibly can. I, I took this position. Um, I was I was kind of asked about this position with the intent of trying to redefine physical education across the country, um, and and that's that's what I'm that's what I want to do. That's what I'm passionate about. So any way that I can help out, we do have some resources that we've sent to um, some people already, um, and that's just a little bit of. Some tidbits and some snippets here and there that give people some some options. Um, uh, yeah, I'd love to share. I think that's awesome. You are changing. You are changing physical education. I'm thrilled to kind of be a part of watching you do it. I think it's amazing what what you continue to push out. So, in terms of kind of what our daily drop ins all about, we really want to make sure that we're not only answering questions, we're able to provide as much value as possible. So, as you're live with us for all of our 
amazing network that is in our private group right now over at teachbettergroup.com. Um, feel free to comment with your questions. Feel free to tell us kind of what situation you're currently in right now. The reality is that it seems like things are changing hour by hour. Um, yesterday's even, I feel like we got so much more information in the state of Illinois. So if you can just continue to, to update us, we, we care about you. We wanna hear about what information you have from your school district, how students are responding to the situation. So we can be here as brainstorming partners because you know Jennings and I were thrilled to catch up, of course, in this live video, but uh, he has so much to share and we would love to just be here to support kind of everything you have planned for today and even your plans for next week, if we can even think that far ahead. Uh, for those of you that are new to our Teach Better family, I can tell you that this is just one of the many things our team continues to do to support this brainstorming. You know, these daily drop-ins we're gonna do every single morning, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at 7 a.m. Central, 8 a.m. Eastern from now until whenever, you know, until until we get through this. You know, Jennings, I'm sure uh, we're thrilled that you're here this morning. We'd love to have you join us sometime in the future just to continue to share all that you're doing. And we have a lot of other things that, that you can check out as well, including um, online courses at Teach Better Academy, blogs, podcasts, free downloads, and everything in between. So I'm so thrilled that you're all here this morning. And if you're listening, by the way, uh, right now as a bonus episode on Teach Better Talk, don't forget, you can actually be a part of our live conversation in our private group, which is, you know, either go to teachbettergroup.com or you can just go to Facebook and search Teach Better Team and request to join there. We really just want every educator to be part of this conversation. So um, Jennings, you touched on a lot of kind of like ways that you supported students. And I think that there's this discussion right now around not providing too much information because everybody's in a transition, but also wanting to provide students with maybe some learning opportunities they can do at home, kind of get them up and moving. We don't want them just sitting on the couch all day. You know, how can we go outside? How can we learn? Uh, one of my favorite, you know, moments yesterday was making coffee and I'm looking outside at, you know, in my backyard, I have a church right behind me with this big parking lot and you had students that were, or, you know, young kids that were riding their bikes, you know, like getting out and moving. So do, have you heard of any really quick things, really fun, quick tactical tips or challenges like you mentioned earlier? Maybe you could recommend that we could, you know, send out to our students as optional opportunities to be physical. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, so the first thing that I always that I I guess it's only been a week, but the first thing that I've been telling people this week is, you know, because I think there was a really um, a pretty strong sense of I have to stay inside during this time. And, yeah. you know, and I don't, it's not necessarily a scare tactic, but I, I mean, it's trying to do the right thing, I suppose. But the fact of the matter is going outside is great. Walk your dog. Right. Go for a bike ride. Go for a jog if, if you like to jog, right? Like whatever it is, but get outside and get some fresh air, get some sunlight. Um, I know it's cold, but like just being able to get out there is, is a huge thing because you're confined inside to what you can do, right? You, you know, you, if you try to bring a hockey stick inside, if you're a hockey player, you know, mom and dad aren't going to be super pumped, you know, but, um, you know, so I always recommend going outside. That's the first thing. Um, the second thing is, whatever you try to do, try to do it with the whole family because all members of the family right now need a time that they can kind of decompress and get away, whether it's from work with mom and dad or, or parents and guardians working from home, or it's from trying to help out with math homework, right? That's, that's stressful. Um, and so just kind of taking that time. Um, and then otherwise it's everything. There's a, you're going to see a a huge, huge number of like workout videos going around on social media right now. You can find any type of just fun little game that you want online. Um, like I said, you can turn, you know, anything that you have in the house into a piece of workout equipment. If you've got a book bag, load it up with stuff. And now you've got a set of weights. If you've got a couple socks, ball them up. And now you can play dodgeball with socks. Um, if you've got a beach towel, roll the beach towel up, put it on the ground and you've got a balance beam hold that rolled up beach towel in half. And now you've got a tennis racket. Like and there's so many things that you can do um, just, just to get moving to have a little bit of fun. Because honestly, like I said, right now, what are you really going to do 
you know, we're not going to, you're not going to get graded or you shouldn't be in my opinion. And you're not going to get assessed. Your grade's not going to go down because we're out of school for a month, but really encouraging that kind of enjoyment and movement and experimentation. Like how can I stay active? Right. And um, if you are a teacher and I, I recommend this for every teacher, if, if you're doing anything that is um, like a video check-in, whether you're a PE teacher or a history teacher, I would encourage you to do it maybe while you're outside walking, right? Mm -hmm. Go for a walk and chime in with your students and say, hey, look, you know, I can't be pent up all day. I don't expect you to be either, right? Like, what could you do? It's modeling the behavior you want your students to see. And this isn't just you recommending we get outside. This is the CDC and every, you know, doctor who's hosting podcasts on this topic. They're telling people to get outside and stay physical. And so I think it's really important. Um, I wouldn't even think of any of the recommendations you just gave about creating like things that you have in your house as like, that was so smart. I'm going to go right. get a towel. I want to <laughs> have a balance beam. That's awesome. Yeah. And, uh, and it's anything. So then if you have, if you roll up the um, towel, now it can serve as a net if you have like a tennis ball and you can kind of play hand tennis in your, on your living room or on your kitchen floor, or you can jump. I mean, you've got little tykes, you can jump back and forth over top of the towel, or you can try to stand on one foot or, um, I've, I've also become a huge proponent and I never was, and I don't know why it took me until this week to recognize the power of sidewalk dog, right? Like you can draw hopscotch, you can draw a balanced beam, you can draw um, a circle, you can draw a bunch of circles and play like leapfrog or, you know, anything, <laughs> anything you want, like the, the sky's the limit when you kind of make some art on your driveway, you know, and um, obstacle courses, build a fort in your living room and climb over top of it and underneath it and roll and crawl and crab walk and kick, jump, anything, climb a tree, climb a fence, like, the, the sky, the sky is the limit, truthfully. Um, and, you know, the, the silver lining in this is I think, hopefully, if we do a good enough job as educators and as family members um, of kind of giving back some autonomy and some ownership into our, our children. And that's like, again, that's not just in the movement sense, that's not just in the PE sense, but kind of providing very, I mean, it's right now, we have no other choice, but it's giving ownership in education to the students right now, because we yeah. can't stand over them at their desk and say, get this done. And we can't stand yeah. over the parents in the house and say, make sure your kids get this done. I mean, it's, it's, it's time to, to really kind of shine, so to speak. And I'm, and I'm excited. I, truthfully, it's, it's not, not the ideal situation by any means. And I don't want to come across sounding like that. But I'm interested to see where this goes. Absolutely. I think we've talked a lot about these daily drop-ins that, you know, these really, we could see this as a, as a very scary, horrible, horrible thing. Or we can acknowledge that it's happening, do our best to try and find a solution quickly, and see the silver lining by, by looking at how we can change up our practices. And, you know, we talked about that yesterday when I was live with Dave Schmidto just talking about, you know, finding the opportunities here to grow as better educators, to give ownership back to students, which is a huge element of what this group stands for in terms of a, you know, a mastery best practice focus anyway. And I think that's really important. Randy made a comment when you said about getting outside. She's like, unless you live in Ohio where it won't stop raining. Randy, I will tell you, you will not melt. Go outside in the rain. You'll be fine. And it's a great opportunity to like do something you might not, not normally do and then go inside and you can shower and get in, you know, a warm sweatshirt and you'll be fine. So even if it's raining, it's not an excuse. Go do something goofy. <laughs> and it's a good opportunity. I think it's awesome. Yeah. yeah, I can, I can understand that though. So I went, um, I moved up here to Boise and having no real idea what Idaho was like, I was completely planning for, um, you know, snow and cold and frigid and lots of crazy elements and it's not like that at all up here like i tell people like back home like that you know the past four days five days it's been 53 and sunny <laughs> and like so it's like perfect for me but yeah so like i don't i don't know i don't know i don't know why i'm not a weather person i'm not a climatologist i just 
I, people get mad at me when I'm like, yeah, I'm outside sitting on the deck. <laughs> yeah, so. I love it. Hopefully we have some good weather coming to the Midwest soon. Um, yes. We've been getting a lot of comments, and I think this is good, Jennings. I'd love to take these comments and kind of dive into them. I think some of them are going to be you know, related to educators as a whole. Some might be some specific to the work you're doing, but I'd love to hear your perspectives. Um, we have a, one comment here that I think it uh, continues, but it says, I'm feeling very challenged to meet the needs of my students who do not have internet access. I have many rural students or low-income students. Our district is attempting to mail assignments, but limiting it to, to five pages. And I think this comment actually continues because I'm pretty sure I know who posted this, but for, for generally, for just that snapshot, um, what would you kind of give to that educator who is worried about wanting to support their students, doesn't feel like we have the equity that we need to give them access to everything we wish we could. And now it says they're mailing assignments home. If you could only mail five assignments to a, or five pages to a student, Jennings, what would, what would you pick to kind of challenge them to be doing? I actually have, I have that right now sitting next to me as, um, and it's, so the first thing that I would give out would be a um, suggested calendar, like, a, not, excuse me, not a calendar, suggested daily schedule. Um, yeah. And in, in kind of the less is more essence, um, we've encouraged families, and this goes out, this is being sent out to families, not necessarily schools, um, but encourage families to make physical education an all day class. So not not planning on having, oh, I've got to chunk out 45 minutes or 30 minutes right now, um, but breaking it up, right? And making making your classroom, you know, as mobile as possible. So if a kid is reading, encourage them to stand or walk around the house while they read. If a kid's working on an assignment, it's no different than flexible seating in a classroom. Go get up, move, sit, jump, you know, be on something on the back of the couch or on the armrest, right? Moving around. Um, and then don't let kids work for over an hour and a half max. I would suggest an hour and then like 10 minutes of movement, but I get that sometimes an hour isn't quite enough. So an hour and a half max, and then 10 to 15 minutes of, of an activity. And it can be anything from a yoga video, right? As a family or um, just sending the kid outside and run around the house five times, right? Like whatever, whatever you want to do, um, make it fun though and make it enjoyable. And if you break that up and do that three or four times or two or three times a day, plus you're allowing them to move um, throughout the kind of the academic time, I guess, whatever you want to call it. Um, I think that's, that's a great, great way to kind of get through things. I never want parents or family members to bite off more than they can chew. So what we've done is we've taken um, actual little snippets um, of small activities from our curriculum that we have created for K-12 PE. And um, we've thrown them together based off of grade level that require very little, if any, equipment. So it's an actual, actual activities from our curriculum that we do in our movement classes, that our teachers do in our movement classes, um, that you can do right there in your home, whether it's in the living room or outside, or if you move the car out of the garage and do the garage. And um, that way it doesn't require any videos, doesn't require any submission online. It's just a, here are some options. And we have some ways that you can accommodate on there. We've got some progressions listed on there to how to make it more challenging or modifications to make it a little bit less challenging. Um, and, and it's just kind of up to you to use your imagination and, and take those where you want. Um, like, like we said, we have our, our contact information on everything that we've been giving out. Mm -hmm. hoping and encouraging people to reach back out and if they want more we'll send we'll send them more because right now it's it's an unprecedented time and so everybody needs everybody deserves the help that they're asking for so we're going to do it well and i think that, that you have done a number of positive elements not only being physical throughout the day and getting them up and moving but how can we as maybe you know classroom teachers i'm a math teacher but how can i change my lessons to get students moving so that you, when you talk about, it really breaks my heart, this hour of sitting and working, I don't want my students to have that experience. I want them to be up and moving. And that goes back to finding a way to do your content where your students can take ownership over it. It's not too much stress for the parent, but the student is also getting up and moving. And so trying to find this balance of 
trying to build relationships. That was a huge focus of our daily drop in yesterday. Uh, you don't need to be introducing new content right now. And if you are, um, I really hope that that is a conversation that you're continuing to have with your administration, but trying to build in like healthy habits with that, which is really important. I love that Aunt, uh, Amanda commented that she went on a walk yesterday with her dog and bumped into um, a student where they decided to get out, you know, as well. And so those are those are safe experiences. You can't always, you know, give them a hug when you bump into them on the sidewalk or anything like that because we do want to practice that social distancing. But I love that, you know, we're choosing to get out. Um, Lisa comments here saying, hi, we're still in an optional or enrichment assignment for kids. I had students check in yesterday with a flip grid and ask them to tell me what their daily schedule looks like. I was thrilled that so many have scheduled get out and play time, shooting hoops, walking, biking, trampoline, etc. What other suggestions can I make for my kids um, in New England? So weather is super, is, is, is a super variable, but I think that you gave a lot for Lisa to consider in terms of household items or, you know, the silly one you said, like, go run around the house five times. Like, yes, just go be, go be physical, right? right. Yes. So yeah. I actually was on a call yesterday with um, a couple of PE teachers and we came up with an idea that I thought was just phenomenal um, as an kind of as an assignment is you can think of you know, depending on who's in the house, hopefully there's, it's not just one student. Hopefully there's, you know, family members or guardians or brothers and sisters or something. But um, think of two or three things that probably all houses, households have in them. List those out and ask the kids to create a game, right? So for example, like probably everybody has a broom. Probably everybody has a, a blanket or a towel and probably everybody has uh, a chair, right? Or a, a laundry basket. So those, those are your four stipulations and you, you have to include those and create a game and then record the game, explain the, write the game down, explain it, play it, whatever. And then tell me about it. What's it called? How do you play? How do you keep score? And just go from there. I mean, like, again, giving ownership and autonomy, um, and, and taking these movement experiences and these educational experiences on their own shoulders and, and doing it in a fun way, I think that's I think that's a great great thing. So um, I, that idea. I think that's something that every teacher can do, whether you are a first grade teacher or a high school math teacher. You know, something we talk about a lot in this group is supporting a variety of educators, but strong education, data supported best practice education exists whether you in a you teach fourth grade or you teach you know high school english and so finding ways that you can take these strategies we have a lot of comments saying that they love all the ideas that you're providing so far jennings but finding these opportunities not just do this right now when it's top of mind but consistently because this is just good instruction to be able to challenge our students to be problem solvers give them opportunities to move their body i mean these are things we love seeing awesome Awesome. Well, I mean, that's, that's the truth. And I appreciate that because it is, I mean, it's physical education for a reason, right? Like it, it's not, there is a difference between physical education and physical activity. Physical activity is great, but it's not necessarily physical education, right? We, we do want to teach and we do have a lot of the same principles that you would have in a math or a science class. And I think that's missed sometimes, um, which is a little bit, you know, a little bit unnerving, but at the same time, it's, again, it's nobody's fault. It's just a matter of kind of redefining physical education and letting people know. And um, that's why I'm so appreciative of having being able to be on with you and have these conversations because oftentimes, you know, we, we just speak in the echo chamber. Like I, I spend the vast majority of my time with physical educators and they know and hear all these things all the time, but it doesn't ever get out of the silo. And so, so again, thank you. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping the things that we're talking about are, are helpful for people. So, so I'm going to challenge everybody. I want you to all pick a household item right now and throw it in the comments. And we are going to expect you to be sharing a video or a selfie with us later today, making a game of some household item, whether it's balancing something on your head or doing something wacky. We want to hear, but pick an item right now because we're going to hold you accountable. Yeah. So. Put it, put it in there and I'll get, I'll get you a video by the end of the day. Yeah, I think that'd be awesome. Yeah, that would, uh, be, that would be great. Other, 
while you're doing that, um, I do want to give a shout out. If you are listening to this episode right now on Teach Better Talk podcast as a bonus episode, you can participate as well. Just feel free to tweet at us. Jennings, you can find him on a lot of different platforms. Um, would you mind kind of sharing maybe your email or your social media handle? That way, if they're listening to this after the fact, watching it on YouTube, or um, they're listening on our podcast that they're able to maybe share out their photos after the fact as well, maybe outside of this group. Absolutely. So, um, like I said, I can, if we, we can send it out on the chat box or whatever, if, if that's something that we can do, but my email address that I encourage everybody to, um, to shoot me an email if you have any questions or if you want more information, or if you'd like any of the things that I've mentioned, I, I can definitely get those over to you. Um, email address is M Jennings, J E N N I N G S at athlos.org, A T H L O S.org. Um, and then I would really, I'd love it if um, we got you to follow our us on Twitter, and that's um, at Athlos HB. Um, like I said, at Athlos HB, that's you know that's a great place to get a lot of um, what we think is very quality content that can help out, especially in these times. Um, we will be having actually, you can pass this on to whoever is interested. We have a similar kind of open forum chat similar to this uh, lined up for next Thursday at 2 p.m. Central. Nice. Um, nice. And so we encourage administrators, classroom teachers, whoever wants to be there and just listen. I mean, it's it's a everybody, it's a big Zoom meeting. So you can participate as much or as little as you'd like. And it's just kind of chatting and bouncing ideas off one another. So, so I'm um, throwing out a Thursday Zoom meeting. What is the topic or where can they get more information? So you can get more information by um, following us on Athlos HB. That is, um, we, we have things posted there. There'll be a link that you can just click on and register. And we're having, we decided to do it once every week. So it'll be every Thursday at 2 p.m. Um, and it really is not necessary. What what time is it? 2 p.m. Central, sorry. Um, and... It's, there's not really necessarily a topic. It's more of, um, we had a little bit of a discussion yesterday with a smaller group of physical educators, um, and it went so well that we wanted to open it up to anybody and everybody. And so it's just a, what's working, what's not, what do we think, you know, how can we do better? Um, I'm out of ideas. A week's been a week's gone by and I'm empty, right? Like what I need, I need to refill the tank. Like what can we do? Um, so, like I said, if you follow us uh, on Twitter, um, you'll get you'll have access to those links. You just sign up, and then you have access to every every one of the meetings for <laughs> the foreseeable future. Because we don't know, we don't know what yeah. the future is right now. So. Well, I love that your team is dedicated to providing not only value now, but really trying to be a part of the revamp as we go. Because I think that there's a reality to the fact that while educators are confused and you know things are changing so fast and all these pieces. There, this is kind of like the high point, and then we're going to get into this this lull where we're going to be expecting educators to be doing things, but not necessarily helping them refuel. And the more that that groups can do, whether it be the group that you're a part of now at teachbetter.com or you know being a part of connecting with Jennings and Athos and all the work they're doing, we really want to make sure that we're here to answer questions consistently and give you ideas consistently so that you're not only doing good instruction and good support for your students today, but if this continues for a month, then we're you know doing it a month from now as well. So I love that you're doing that every single week because people are going to need different things depending on the day and depending on the week. So being there and being present is so valuable. We appreciate that you're doing that. Um, somebody did ask here, looks like it was Alex that said, so the link can be found on the Twitter account. Is that what you're is that what you're thinking? Yeah, I think we posted, uh, I don't know if it, it won't be in, it'll be on our website, obviously, and that link is on our Twitter account. And then I think the most recent post is about, um, that has the link and everything on it. So, um, yeah, so that's great. And then, um, yeah, anything and everything, like I said, I can't say it enough, and I'm sorry if I sound like a broken record, but I really do mean it. We, you know, we are here. We are here to support everybody on this call, everybody in, you know, that is in this time. So we've got things that we're sending directly to families um, that maybe that are that have been, you know, 
lost a little bit because the school district is still trying to figure things out and families are recognizing that my kids are going nuts. <laughs> and so, you know, we got things for them. We've got things for districts, individual teachers. Um, so. I love it. And I know whether you're listening now and you work with Athos consistently and you're a client of theirs, I mean, regardless of what you're doing, it's full of educators that just want to do best for students. And so, you know, whether it's connecting with Jennings personally or, you know, working with Athos in the future or connecting with the team so that you can, you know, figure out what, what you can do to support. Um, the whole point of these daily drop-ins is try and give you a lot of food for thought, a lot of ideas. And I can confidently say, Jennings, you provided a ton. People, these comments that are coming in are, are full of people just being so appreciative that you're able to share small, quick things they can literally go put in place when this video ends. And then, you know, to be able to refuel on Thursday, maybe get some more ideas. We'd love to invite you on in the future to come join us as a, you know, another conversation. I know this is so early for you, um, but I, I think that people really appreciate just having these tactical tips that they can go and implement, do some reflection on, and then maybe provide us some feedback on how everything went. We'd really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. And I would, uh, I'd wake up early anytime to do this. So this was absolutely fantastic. Um, there's a ton of fun catching up as usual. So thank you. Um, and like I said, I, I look forward to hearing from anybody and everybody that has questions or, or wants a little bit of support. And um, first and foremost, obviously, best of luck to everybody and continue to do the great things that you're doing. I mean, there's there's a lot of dedicated folks out there right now. And it's and it, you guys, everybody deserves to be recognized. So thank you for everything that you're doing. Absolutely. And thank you from us as well that you chose to join us. I know it's very early, but we just very much appreciate all your ideas and your amazing insight. And like I said at the very beginning, it was not only a bucket list to come live with you, but I, I am a super fan of all the work you're doing and constantly following all the, the powerful tools that you're pushing out to educators. So any way that we can support the work you're doing, you got to let us know. But for all of our listeners, don't forget, you can get this full episode as a bonus episode of Teach Better Talk podcast. It comes out, you know, a few hours after our recording finalizes. And they can also catch these recorded um, every single day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at 7 a.m. Central, 8 a.m. Eastern, whether it be on YouTube. Uh, we upload them to Facebook page. And then in this group, obviously, they're archived forever. Uh, if you are somebody who's hearing these tips and you want to participate live, the only thing you need to do is be a part of our private group and you can send in your comments and be an active part of this discussion. So we'd really love to have you and, of course, be able to ask your questions as well and hopefully have our network continue to brainstorm and be a partner uh, of learning alongside. So Jennings, thank you so much for, for all that you do, providing so much value and uh, we hope that we're able to come live with you again, you know, in the future and continue to spitball ideas for people after they've tried out these strategies. So thank you again. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Ray. Um, and I will come on anytime you want. Anytime you want me to come back and get geeky about physical education, I'm in. <laughs> I love it. All right. Thanks guys so much. See ya. Bye, everybody.